this week we are getting deeper into conditionals or if statements suppose we have this situation where we need to print a student score if the score is 90 or more we need to print that the student has received an a and if the score is between 80 and 90 that is 80 or more and but less than 90 the grade should be b and so on and so forth so we have five grades to print based on the scores so it would go like this if the score is more than or equal to 90 then print your grade is a then we can check if the score is greater than or equal to 80 and less than 90 we need to print b so on and so forth that would be rather tedious if you know that the score is 90 or more of course you have to print a but if it is not greater than or equal to 90 you know that it is definitely less than 90 so you don't really need this check if this is false if greater than or equal to 90 is false you don't need to check that this is less than 90 so this helps us write the conditionals in a different way we can check like this if the score is 90 or more of course the grade is a we print that otherwise now if we ever see that the score is less than or equal to 90 we will be here and we don't have to check this again the score is less than or equal to 90 but all we need to do to print that the grade is b is to satisfy ourselves that the score is 80 or more so if python uh, python or any uh, logic comes to this place otherwise it is guaranteed that the score is less than 90 so if the score is now 80 or more we can print that the grade is b so this is a better way of uh, expressing our logic this otherwise is for this if so when we say otherwise it means score is less than 90 now if the score is more than 80 or equal to 80 we know that the score lies somewhere between 80 and 90 80 81 82 83 84 85 86 87 88 89 it includes 80 does not include 90 now you print the grade is b if this is not true then this otherwise applies to this if you see there is an if here and there is an otherwise going with it and that is uh, attached to this if when we come here we know that we are here because we came from a failure of this test which came about because there was a failure of this condition so it is not 90 or more and it is not even 80 or more so we know that this is less than 80 so if the score is 70 or more we know that the student receives a c similarly here we know that the score is less than 70 so if the score is 60 or more we can print the grade is d finally there is an otherwise here which is attached to this f at this point in, we know that the score is less than 60 so we print the grade is f and that logic satisfies this table now look at this one we have an otherwise and immediately an if these two can be combined in python if you remember otherwise is the same as else otherwise in pseudo code is same as else in python and this if is the same as if in python else if are combined to produce what is called l if so if score is 90 or more we write if score is greater than or equal to 90 put a column as you know 
print your grade is a print your grade is a otherwise if otherwise is else if is if in python else and if are combined into one word in python and that is called elif the first two letters of else and if elif score is 80 or more score greater than or equal to 80 colon print your grade is b print that otherwise if l if score greater than or equal to 70 otherwise if l if score greater than or equal to 60 otherwise and that is else now let's look at another problem suppose we have this table of medical diagnosis we look at somebody's total cholesterol value and systolic blood pressure if the total cholesterol is more than 200 and systolic blood pressure is 135 or more than 135 we decide that this person needs treatment if the total cholesterol is less than or equal to 200 but systolic blood pressure is still more than 135 we want to watch the bp if the total cholesterol is more than 200 and systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 135 we want to watch the cholesterol the cholesterol is in dangerous territory here the systolic blood pressure is in bad range and here both are bad so we have three bad cases and we have this case where total cholesterol is less than or equal to 200 systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 135 then we say maybe things are okay so we need four different messages for four different conditions and one thing you might have started realizing by now is there is no the program the same problem can be solved in many different ways and we will see one way of solving this in the next slide we can express our logic like this if total cholesterol is more than 200 that is one of these two cases first and third row here if systolic blood pressure is more than 135 we are talking about this case then see we have a condition here if the total cholesterol is more than 200 if that is true then logic is here control is here we are executing this line at that time we are checking for systolic blood pressure if that is more than 135 then we know that uh, the person needs treatment according to this table so this condition is checked as part of satisfying this condition for total cholesterol so we are checking systolic blood pressure in here when total cholesterol is already known to be more than 200 and so we print you need treatment if systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 135 that is otherwise we still know that total cholesterol is more than 200 so total cholesterol is still more than 200 systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 135 we should watch the cholesterol so that is why we print watch cholesterol so this otherwise is for this if on the systolic blood pressure note that now there is an otherwise here this otherwise is for the total cholesterol being more than 200 so if we come here total cholesterol is less than or equal to 200 and if systolic blood pressure is more than 135 we know that uh, we are in this situation total cholesterol is less than or equal to 200 but then we are checking if systolic blood pressure is more than 135 if that is true we want to watch the bp otherwise this otherwise is for this if we print you are probably okay so notice how these otherwise statements are arranged there are 
several of them. This otherwise is for this if. This otherwise is for the first if. And this otherwise is for this if. So all of these four statements here, if systolic blood pressure is more than 135 through print, watch your cholesterol, all these statements come as part of total cholesterol more than 200. And all these statements here, if systolic BP is more than 135 through print, you are probably okay. They all come under the otherwise part. If you execute one of these uh, print statements, you are immediately out of the whole thing. Let's see how things flow. Suppose somebody's cholesterol is more than 200 and systolic BP is also more than 135. So if total cholesterol is more than 200, that is true. So we execute this line. If systolic BP is more than 135, we have uh, that also satisfied. Then we will print, you need treatment. We will not execute the otherwise. We will not execute these two lines. So these are skipped. We cannot execute this otherwise either because total cholesterol is more than 200. So only this part is going to be effective. So none of these statements will get executed. Let's take another case. Total cholesterol is more than 200, but systolic blood pressure is less than or equal to 135. So total cholesterol is more than 200. So we come here and check if systolic blood pressure is more than 135. That is not true. So we come to the else part and print watch your cholesterol. There is nothing else for the otherwise. So we are out because this otherwise is only for total cholesterol being more than or less than or equal to 200. If the total cholesterol is more than 200, which was the case, we do what is indented for the if. The otherwise is completely ignored. So look at it that way. If suppose the total cholesterol is uh, 150, then this is false. None of these statements will get executed. We will be here and we'll check for the systolic blood pressure. Suppose that is 150, then this will be printed, watch your BP. If it is 100, you will be coming here and then printing, you're probably okay. Now, translating that to Python is fairly straightforward. If total cholesterol is more than 200, so is greater than symbol is used, Put, don't forget the colon. If systolic BP greater than 135, put the colon, print you need treatment. Else is for this otherwise, print watch your cholesterol. This else is for the second otherwise. And then we have the translation of the pseudocode to Python over here. Now, you can see that there are different combinations of things. There are, and as I said, there are other ways to solve this problem than going through this kind of logic. Very often we need to take slightly more complicated approaches because the situations are more complicated. Uh, suppose we have this situation. Suppose tax rate is set to 15% if income is greater than or equal to 30,000 and less than 50,000. So if somebody makes $40,000, then the income is more than 30,000, less than 50,000, the tax rate is 15%. We can write like this. If income is greater than or equal to 30,000, if income is less than 50,000, set tax rate to 15. We can definitely code like this. There is nothing wrong with it, but there is an alternative. What is the alternative? We write like this. If income is greater than or equal to 30,000, and if this condition is true, 
and income is less than 50,000, if both, both conditions are true, set tax rate to 15. So we don't write two separate if statements. We accomplish the condition with just one if statement, but the condition is a little more complicated. There are two conditions for this big condition. The first condition is income being greater than or equal to 30,000. And the second condition is income less than 50,000. Both conditions have to be true for the whole thing to be true. And if the whole thing is true, we set the tax rate to 15. For that, we use and. So an and is called a logical operator, sometimes called a Boolean operator. It takes two conditions. And if both conditions are true, the whole thing condition, the big condition is true. If either condition is false, the big condition is false. Now let's look at another situation. If the temperature is less than negative 10, we need to print a warning message saying the weather is really bad, that people shouldn't be going out perhaps. Or if the temperature is more than 110, we again want to print an alert saying people shouldn't be going out. So we need to print an alert message in both of these conditions. We can code like this. Instead of doing it like this, we can write, if temperature is less than minus 10 or temperature is more than 110, print alert. So an R is used to connect two independent conditions. If either condition is true, the whole big condition is true. If both of these conditions are false, then the whole condition is false. So we are going to print an alert if the temperature is less than minus 10 or temperature is more than 110. Now, sometimes we need to remember the results of evaluating conditions. You see, uh, we have always um, used variables to remember results of arithmetic computations. For example, we might compute the tax of a person and remember that in a variable called tax so that you can use it in a different uh, location or we can uh, compute the total price of a product and use it in different places if we remember that in a variable. Similarly, we need to sometimes remember the results of testing results of conditions so that you can use that in multiple places. For example, suppose we want to check the income of a person and whether the person is disabled. If income is less than 30,000 and if the person is disabled, status is going to say whether the person is disabled, we need to set the person's insurance premium to zero. But if the person makes more than the 30,000 or equal to 30,000, or if the person is not disabled, we need to compute the insurance premium. Now suppose if the income is less than 30,000, status is equal to disabled, we need to, some, uh, we need to send some notification to social services. So look at this condition, uh, income less than 30,000 and status is disabled. Same thing is true here. So both conditions are exactly the same. So it is possible to remember this result of the test somewhere. You, instead of checking these conditions uh, repeatedly, we can remember the decision of this evaluation in a special variable called a Boolean variable 
a boolean variable can be having just one of two possible values either it is true or false it is not like an integer variable which can have an unlimited number of different values or a float which can have an unlimited number of values or strings again it, a string can be just about anything but a boolean variable can be just one of two possible values either it is true or false those are the only two possible values so we write like this if income is less than 30000 and status equals disabled set qualifies for benefits to true this is of course pseudo code this is not python code so we test once if income is less than 30000 and status is disabled we set qualifies for benefits to true otherwise if income is greater than or equal to 30000 or status is not disabled we set qualifies for benefits to false now you can simply check if qualifies for benefits is true insurance premium is zero if qualifies for benefits is true send notification to social services you don't have to check this condition repeatedly you have all already remembered what the result of the test is and you are using that fact using you're remembering the result of the test in future decision making future actions so this is much more elegant much more efficient and clearer because we have fewer of these complicated conditions we already know that the result is here so all we need to do is use this simple variable if qualifies for benefits is true another advantage is even if you change the in value of income or status for other reasons this variable remains true or false depending upon the original test you have to remember that we have seen two boolean operators or two logical operators and was one of them or was the other we now have one more here that is called not what does not do it flips the value not of a boolean value just changes that to the other value for example not something equal to true is the same as checking if that is equal to false see we have to, we are checking whether something is equal to true is false that is the meaning of this is it the case that a boolean va variable is equal to true is actually not true which means it is checking whether the boolean variable is equal to false okay let's take a look an example here in pseudo code for the, using the not operator we need to classify a test a test meaning a test in a college class or something like ics 140 and we want to classify it as either easy test or not an easy test so that is decided in this case by looking at the average score and the maximum score if the average score is more than 80 the class average is more than 80 and maximum score is more than 95 we decide that is an easy test i mean that is just our decision okay so we are saying that um, on the average students have done quite well and somebody has scored quite high then it is an easy test otherwise we say that it is not an easy test so this is the uh, logic find out what the average score was 
find out what the maximum score was. Then if the average score is more than 80, and you have to have this condition satisfied, and the condition maximum score greater than 95 also satisfied. If both of these are satisfied, we set EC test to true. We are setting this Boolean variable, EC test to the value true. By the way, in Python, we use the word true with a capital T. That is an unusual thing in Python to have a capital for a reserved word. This is a reserved word. You can't use it as a variable name. Capital T true. If the average score is a little, is less than or equal to 80, or the maximum score is less than or equal to 95, we set easy test to false. So we have made a decision. Easy test is either true or false. Now we are going to say, read a specific score into some score. So we are reading um, some student score. And that is in this variable sum score. If sum score is more than 90, okay, that is this student scored more than 90, this specific student, and not an easy test. This is the same as checking easy test is equal to false we print you did well. So if somebody scored more, a very good score for a test that was not considered easy, we are printing you did well. And this is how we check that it is not an easy test. Easy test is true if it was an easy test, right? Uh, so we are saying not easy test. So easy test is false. If easy test is false and student had a score of 90 or more, we are printing, you did well. Now, you, are, you have seen arithmetic operators, plus, minus, star, slash, two forms of division, slash and slash, slash, mod, percent. You have seen exponentiation, star, star. You have seen Comparisons, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, not equal to, the bank symbol followed by equals, two equal symbols for comparison for equality and so on. And we just saw three Boolean operators or logical operators called not and or. So, Typically, as you write uh, programs in the future, you are going to see expressions that involve arithmetic, comparisons, and logic. So it is important to know what gets done first, what gets done next, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the precedence of all these operators. Arithmetic is done first. Assume there are no parentheses. If there is absolutely no parentheses, arithmetic will be done first. All the arithmetic will get done first. Then it will do all the relational operators. And finally, it will do the Boolean. In fact, this is also the order in which you saw these topics. You saw arithmetic first in the first uh, two or three lectures or four lectures. Then we, you saw comparisons. That was uh, when we de dealt with if statements. And now we are seeing logic. So uh, the order of operations is exactly the order in which you saw them in this course. So let's take an expression like this b less than a plus 3 and not b equals 4 or a plus b equals 5. How does this expression get evaluated? It looks pretty complicated, right? Arithmetic is done first. So it does a plus 3, a plus 3 first. There is another arithmetic operation here, a plus b. 
So these two will get done first. So I am indicating that by putting parentheses around A plus 3 and A plus B. Then what gets done next? Um, comparisons. You can see that there is an and, not, or, but there are also comparisons less than, equals, 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 equals. So these will get done next. So A plus 3 has already been evaluated. We will be comparing B against A plus 3 next. So I put, to indicate that I have put parentheses around that. Then it will compare B equals 4. So I have put parentheses around that. And finally, A plus B will be compared against 5. So there is a, there is pair of parentheses around that. So after A plus B was evaluated, we compare the result of that addition against 5. That is why we have comparison here. Sorry, parentheses here. Now we are going to do the logic operators with not being done first. Remember, when you do arithmetic, we do exponentiation first, then multiplication, division, and mod. They all have the same precedence. And finally, you do addition and subtraction. Similarly here, we have not coming in first. So not of B equals four is done before the or. In fact, that is also done before the and. And and is done before or. So I have put all these parentheses to indicate the precedence. This is how Python will actually evaluate this expression. If you don't put parentheses around anything in an expression like what we have here, Python will evaluate it as if, as if we put parentheses like this. Now, you have seen relational operators, we have seen logic, we have seen if statements, etc. Now, I wanted to emphasize a few things regarding the use of some of these uh, operators. These are very important. These can, if you use them wrongly, you will be frustrated, no end. So this table, you should remember very well. If you have bugs in your program, check whether you have violated something in this table. Almost always in every ICS 140, class, there are quite a few students who violate one or more of these things. I try to emphasize this, but it is difficult initially to resist some temptations. You will eventually learn, but, but the earlier you learn, the less frustrated you will be. Let's go over these things. These are either not advised or plain wrong. If A is 10, don't write like this. Python will take it, but you will, you're making a mistake if you are think you're trying, if you're trying to check whether A has the value 10, don't do this, please. You will be uh, headed for a headache at a later stage. If you have this habit, instead check if A equals equals 10. This means something else in Python. It will, it, it may or may not work for a test like this. Check if A equals equals 10 to compare whether A has the value, to check whether A has the value 10. 
this is uh, possibly accepted in Python, but I don't recommend you are doing it because many, many languages don't like this. And if you get into this habit, you're going to be in trouble later. Maybe you can write, maybe you can think like this. If 10 is less than A is less than 20, that is A is between 10 and 20, but not 10 or 20, right? Something like 15 or 12 or 17 or 19 or 11. Write like this. If 10 is less than A and A is less than 20, Now, if you are trying to check if A has the value 10 or A has the value 20, you might be tempted to write like this. If A equals 10 or 20, that is not correct. Python will possibly accept it, but you are not going to get the right results all the time. Instead, you should write if A equals equals 10 or A equals equals 20, don't take shortcuts. This will not work correctly. If A equals five, if you're trying to compare A and five, write equals equals. Then another thing, very common mistake, very, very, very common. You must avoid this. You must remember this. This is a big, big issue. If A is not equal to five or A is not equal to six, you're checking, uh, what are you trying to check here actually? Um, if, um, if you're trying to check A shouldn't be five or six, this is the wrong thing to do. If A is, if you're trying to check that A has to be anything other than five or six, the right way to write is if A is not equal to five and A is not equal to six. Think of it. Any value would be equal to only one thing, right? I mean, it's only one thing. You can't have, you can't, it can't be equal to two different things. So, if you're saying A should not be either five or six, then um, of course, if you put four, four here, if A is four, A is not equal to five because A is four and A is not equal to six. So things are fine. But what if A is equal to five? Suppose A is five, then A not equal to five is, is it true? It is false, right? But A is five, so it is not equal to six. So this is true. A not equal to five is false because A is equal to five. But if A is five, it is not equal to six. So this would be true. So if A is five, this whole thing will be true. Now suppose A is six, six is not equal to five. So this part is true. So the whole thing is true. So this will be true no matter what. And it is a huge, huge mistake. Please, please remember this. You are going to be trapped into situations where you will write like this if you, don't, if you are not conscious. You must write if A is not equal to five and it is also not equal to six. I can't overemphasize uh, this row. In fact, all of these are important. These two are the biggest culprits, the third and the fifth ones in this.